Yoni's disease is a common cause of death and reduced growth rates among deer, sheep and cattle. Ag Research and the University of Otago began working together in 2004 and over three years have begun to map the genes they believe play a role in producing either susceptibility or resilience to the disease in deer. Yoni's disease is quite a serious or potentially serious disease of most livestock and it's caused by mycobacterium paratuberculosis. A lot of animals can carry the disease without showing any clinical signs but a small proportion of them will develop quite a serious infection and a serious disease and they can waste away over a period of weeks or months and eventually die. It particularly affects deer because they seem to be more susceptible and they can be affected at a younger age and be affected much more quickly than sheep and cattle which tend to be affected when they're about three or four years of age. It's caused by bacterium that affects the gastrointestinal tract and so it passes out in the faeces and these bacteria can then contaminate food and water but it can also pass inside a pregnant mother into the fetus so the, the, the calf or the lamb that's born is already infected and it can also pass in the milk and the colostrum of infected mothers. There's definitely an age-related susceptibility so that animals less than six months of age are particularly susceptible to infection. It's really important for farmers to recognise the early signs of Yoni's disease and the first thing you see is an animal that's not doing so well, they stop gaining weight and they then start losing weight and they appear to lose a lot of their muscle tissue. The muscle seems to shrink down and the spine tends to stand out. They can then develop very serious diarrhoea and they just fade away and waste away. So it's important to cull those animals as quickly as possible so they don't spread that contamination to the rest of the herd. Once they start developing clinical signs, there is no treatment. And so it's really important from an animal welfare aspect as well to cull those animals as soon as possible because inevitably, once they start losing weight with serious diarrhoea, they're going to die. So it's important to euthanize them. This project arose after we had discovered a number of breeds of deer that were extremely resistant or extremely susceptible. And whereas the holy grail in, in infectious diseases has been to find the gene which causes susceptibility or resistance, we've taken a much more global approach or a systems biology approach. And we've basically not been looking for a single gene, but looking at the function of individual cells, which can be affected by multiple genes. So we're not looking for a single gene, we're looking for pathways of immune responsiveness which could be linked to susceptibility or resistance. What we found is that some of the breeds that are extremely susceptible are also particularly high producing animals. So what we want to do first is remove susceptible individuals from the breeding population and then move on to select only resilient sires or dams for breeding a new generation of animals. But it is possible within one generation to change the profile of a herd genetically. And our approach would be to take a multi-trait selection approach. There already is some very good data for reproduction, for production, for antler growth. We want to now impose on top of that disease resistance traits so we can get the multiple package. And I think that's the real challenge. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.